Hi everyone, so in this video I'm going to be talking about the different stages of being an artist. And I'm going to be talking about how I discovered art and all the stages I went through leading up to where I am now, all the way through being a toddler, through high school, through art school, and graduating art school. And you might remember a video I made in 2017, a long time ago, and basically this is going to be an update of that video. So I'll be talking about all the stages that I've already been through to give you a summary, and then I'm going to be talking about all the new stages that I've experienced since posting that video. So stage one for me was when I was a child, you know, as soon as you can hold a pencil, you're drawing because everyone around you is drawing. It's just fun to make colors on pages, finger painting, crayons, all that kind of stuff. Um, I feel like every kid draws and scribbles at some point, and that was me too, so I'd say that was stage one. Stage two was, I'd say, elementary school, where you're doing art projects in school, and you find yourself putting more time into your artwork, and you start to, to like, really care about it more, and you, you realize you have, like, a creative streak to you, and... You always enjoy the the more creative projects more where you get to make things or draw things or paint things and i'd say this was about elementary school and people around you start saying like oh that looks really good or oh you're you're so creative stuff like that it's when you start to realize that this is a this is a cool thing that you like to do and art class is usually your favorite class stage three i'd say with middle school grades six seven and eight this was a very important time in my artistic journey I feel like at this age, the people who really like to draw keep drawing. This is when I had the most fun with my art. I also discovered what anime was, anime style. I watched so many artists on YouTube. Um, and I just really got into art and I, I felt like I wasn't really held back by any fears of failure. Art was just purely fun and it was a lot of fun. I had a desire to draw and create all the time when I was really into it. I would watch tutorials, I would copy other other tutorials that I saw, I would I started keeping sketchbooks and realized how fun that could be and how how enjoyable it was and I feel like this stage in my life was a really important part of me latching onto art and continuing forward with it. On to stage four. And stage four was the last stage I mentioned in the previous video. It's where I got to high school and in grade nine I started my own YouTube channel where I filmed speed paints and my own art videos because I was so inspired by everybody else. At this point, it what it still wasn't part of my career, it was just a hobby. I counted stage four as all of high school and this is where I was about to enter illustration. I was gonna go to get an illustration degree and I was about to enter that in the fall following me making that video. And at that point of making the video, my channel had just experienced its peak growth. So I got a lot of new subscribers and started to earn enough for my channel to sort of be like a part-time job or more of a full-time job. Um, not fully full-time yet, but it's when I started to make money from YouTube and that was really cool. But I still was not fully sure what I wanted to do with my life. I just knew that I wanted to go into the art program and I was already making income from my art in my YouTube channel and I was ready to see what was in store for me in the future. I also mentioned at stage four, I experienced a lot more doubt and criticism of my own art and fears of failure, whereas in the previous stage, you're just drawing because it's purely fun. But when you start to take something seriously and you really want to learn a lot more about it, that's where the fears come in. And stage four, I definitely experienced this and I experienced what burnout was like when I was trying to post two videos a week, every week. I did that for a long time. I can't believe I did that. That is so exhausting to me now, posting two videos um, every week. If that was the only thing I was doing, easy, I, I could do that. But there's so many other things that I have to do. I, I can barely manage to post one video a week. Um, but this was another very important stage for me. It's when I realized that um, growing a following happened i was lucky and it was very possible for me to make money off my art and i wanted to do more with it so after that summary of the previous video and my previous art stages we get to stage five i would call this my freshman art student and this was a really interesting stage because i was new to art school and in my life i had never really had friends that that drew the same way i did and that like I never really had friends that were into art and into all the same things that I was into and that, that kept sketchbooks and that drew all the time and was interested in like really making something out of their art as a career. 
and I suddenly met all these people that had the same mindset as me and it was so cool and I felt very like connected to this group of people who were just trying to improve their art and giving critique to people and um, meeting all the professors and having art classes. It was really exciting um, and this stage I'd say was probably just like in my first few months of art school. And of course, homework is always um, gonna eventually become tiring and it's not always like sunshine and rainbows. And there's definitely something, a lot of things about art school I didn't like, but there's a lot of things I did like. And in the beginning, it was just so cool to me to see all these other people who were just like me in terms of drawing, talking about art supplies, talking about styles, um, showing each other our sketchbooks, flipping through, drawing, um, life, doing life drawing together. It was a really, really exciting time, and um, that was one of my favorite parts about art school. Also, for some context, I've gra I graduated art school about a year ago, so I can talk about my entire experience in terms of like my stages of being an artist. So I would say stage six, I call it the burnt out art student trying to juggle everything and also sacrificing certain things. So basically, I was deep into art school. Um, I'd say this is like years two, three, and four. I was trying to keep up with YouTube and within the first three years of art school, I still managed to pretty much post a video every week, which I think is really great. And I still had a lot of growth on my channel during this time. Um, I started a shop and Patreon during this time. I made my first sticker pack. I ordered my first enamel pin. I sold my art in a physical sort of like convention space for the first time. It was just a small sale at school, but that was really fun. I loved doing that and I want to do that um, in person one day or not like in person. I want to do that at an actual like Artist Alley event one day. I think that would be so cool. Um, I tried taking on sponsored videos. I was still trying to post once a week. Um, but in my last year of school, I had to take a really long break with videos. It was just like everything was online. I was feeling really burnt out and uninspired and like, like I had no time to do anything that I wanted to do. And I really just had to focus on my art school stuff. And so I took a few months off of YouTube, a really long time of not posting any videos. And that was really scary for me because, um, ever since my channel got a lot of growth, I had been posting videos once a week every single week and this consistency is what drove my channel forward I think and stopping that definitely hindered my growth and I'm still sort of recovering from um, that big break I took and I'm trying to keep posting once a week now. I've been posting consistently for a few months now since I am um, I have all the time in the world but I'll get to that. Um, art wise though during art school in stage six um, I saw a lot of improvement with my art. I became very happy with where my style was going and I sort of felt like I was starting to find my voice as an illustrator and doing all the projects and drawing constantly was the biggest factor in this. It, I don't know if it's necessarily because I went to art school but it's because the fact that art school makes you draw like 24 7 is why I improved so much and I'm really happy with where my art ended up in the end and I think I've improved even more since then a year later and I'm just generally really excited to keep drawing things and see where my art goes in the future. That time was definitely a struggle. I'd call it the burnt out art student and um, I had to sacrifice certain things. I didn't have all the time in the world to work on my shop and my Patreon and do everything that I wanted to do, but it was like a necessary thing to get through art school. I had to just like, I knew it was temporary. I was gonna graduate eventually and it'll all be worth it and I will have all the time in the world to, to work on my my self-employment and get get more work and post more and put more stuff on Patreon and, and make my shop as good as it can be and I'm still sort of finding that groove. Stage 7, I'd call it the art student graduate. It's that weird limbo period where you're trying to figure out what you want to do with your life and everyone's in a different situation but for me I had a foundation built up of followers on social media and YouTube and I wanted my, I had to get back into posting videos, um, so I started doing that, and then I decided to update my store. Well, I had to open my store again because I had it closed during school. I revamped some Patreon stuff, added a new tier, um, and recently I've been posting way more often on social media. I made a TikTok account, I'm trying to accept more sponsorships and more client work, and 
Um, I've even done a commission and it's really nice to have all this time to to fit in everything that I've always wanted to fit in and I definitely feel like I, I need I, I could improve my schedule a lot more and I'm still working on that and I'm working on that like adjustment but I feel pretty adjusted to the schedule that I've sort of built for myself and so yeah I've almost been graduating for a year the adjustment period probably would say a couple months of just like oh, I don't really know what to do. Like suddenly there's no school and like I had to fill the void of empty time with um, different tasks and I tried to juggle it. I figured out that planning everything on Notion was really helpful and I still use Notion. This is not a sponsored video, but I love Notion um, to plan everything out. And that, that keeps me alive. That keeps me sane to have like a sheet um, or like a list for like every single thing I'm doing. Um, it's so nice to be able to put more time into tasks that I really want to do because I felt like during art school, if I had all this homework I knew was due and I had to put out a video, I'd be like, okay, let's get the video done as fast as possible so I can, I can finish my homework. And I didn't get to pause and enjoy the process of anything I was doing. Um, but I feel like my head is a lot more clear and I can put time into things and be more mindful with the tasks that I'm doing. As a person, I need to learn to slow down sometimes, especially my mind. I, I'm an overthinker, I have racing thoughts, um, I ruminate over things a lot. And when you're in art school or any college and you're trying to do other stuff, your mind is like split between two things at all times. And it's really hard to be mindful and like think clearly about things and slow down because you feel like you have to go as fast as you can. Or, or else everything will like slip away and you'll miss deadlines and, and it'll just become difficult. But I feel like now that that is out of my life and I've graduated, I have this like clear space in my head um, that I'm trying to like be more mindful and be more calm when I'm doing things. And it's nice to take my time with things because for like Patreon newsletters, I used to just like type them out as fast as I could and like they would still be good quality it was just i didn't have the time to like sit and like really enjoy the process because some things are really enjoyable and i'm finding little things about all the tasks that i do that make them more enjoyable and faster ways to do them because i'm taking my time more and thinking about it and and sometimes when you're more calm you actually are more efficient because you're you're just like more focused and that's something i'm trying to do in in every aspect of my life like you have to enjoy the little things in life because life is just one big thing made up of tons of little things. If you enjoy the little things, then you're just going to enjoy life. But yeah, at this point, I am that art, art student graduate trying to find my roots. And I feel like I am getting there and I'm pretty much there. I just need like, I feel like I need like a few more years to like really put my all in, into everything. Um, in terms of social media, it's just really nice to not have to worry about homework and due dates. But the, but the homework and due dates gets replaced with the deadlines for sponsorships, but I would much rather that because it feels like it's like contributing to my life than like my education. I'd say the new fears at this stage is becoming stagnant and getting stuck. Um, I'm always scared that I'm gonna like get into a rut and get burnt out and not like my art and not be able to draw anymore but that's just a fear another fear is becoming irrelevant with like the algorithm what if youtube just completely drops my videos what if instagram just doesn't show my art to anybody these are natural fears that happen if you have a social media based career um and there's a lot of like tips to overcome that you just have to not scrutinize the numbers too much i heard someone say that the other day but you just have to Focus on your craft. Don't focus on the platforms because the best you can do is post as frequent as you can and use hashtags and staring at all your analytics constantly is not going to help you. Um, it does help you to look every once in a while to see like, oh, this type of content tends to do better than this. So I can try to do more of that, but not like agonize over stuff when it doesn't get seen by a lot of people. It's best to just move on and keep trying your best. And that's easier to say than it is to do. Trust me, I know. <laughs> um, another fear is burning out and it can happen. Um, another thing that I struggle with is taking breaks and balancing that work-life balance because I'm always thinking about work constantly because I genuinely enjoy everything that I do. But if you're always thinking about it and always doing stuff, um, 
because you enjoy it, you're going to eventually burn yourself out and not enjoy it. So you have to pace yourself. Like everything is good in moderation. Like you enjoy a chocolate chip cookie, but if you eat 20 chocolate chip cookies, you're going to never want to eat another one in your whole life. So that's sort of the analogy that I just thought of. And that's why I try to like take my weekends and like not do too many things, but sometimes I end up editing a video on a Sunday. And I don't think that's necessarily bad. I think it's actually kind of nice to break your work up over the week more and do less each day, but more more focused and more like mindful with everything that you're doing. I feel like a year or two from now, I will probably strike a better balance. And I do think my work-life balance is good, um, but I don't know if I'm like 100% satisfied with it yet. And I'm still figuring it out. Like, I, I I feel guilty when I work on weekends and I feel guilty when I rest on work days. And I don't know, it's definitely a big struggle. And if you're self-employed or have any sort of similar thing that I do, you'll probably relate to that. And if you have any tips, let me know. But I hope you enjoyed this um, stages of being an artist from a child to where I am now. I will update this video in a few years. Hopefully YouTube still exists at that point. I'm sure it will. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, like I said, I have a shop where I sell prints of my art, stickers, enamel pins, tons of stuff like that. And I have a Patreon where anybody for $16 each month or each package you want, you get two prints and a sticker sent to you. And I also have original art there that you can get cheaper than on my actual store. So check all that out if you're interested in any of my work. I hope this video was interesting and please let me know your stages of being an artist because um, everybody is different and it's really cool to hear other people's journeys. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. Um, it was fun to get this all said out loud and recorded down so that I can come back to it in a few years and see where, where I am now. I think looking back is so important and making records for yourself to look back to is really satisfying. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you're having a good week and I'll see you in my next video.